Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam, and I'm one of uh, Roger's very good friends. I have the privilege of sharing a little bit more in uh, the story of Roger through these photographs, so I want to just point your guys' attention to the screen. I don't know, as Scarlett mentioned, he was born in Hong Kong in 1958. Very handsome young kid. And he does come from the Lao family, which means he had a, a big upbringing with brothers. And here's a picture with his dad and four of the brothers at this point. And then if you uh, can see, I, I put Roger in red so you can pick him up quickly because he doesn't look like that now. <laughs> Here it is with Michael's added to the uh, family, the clan. And they're growing up. And then stuck in the middle there, I think Cousin Stan snuck in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry, too fast. Okay, sorry. And they're just growing up here, guys, and again, you can see them here today, and you see how they look now. So this one is, you guys heard of how Roger Joyce's beer and wine. So you look at him there, he doesn't look like he wants to be there. But now we're going to put him in his proper setting. <laughs> So then we also talked about where he went to school. So you guys heard that he went to USC. So here's a picture where he graduates, receiving his diploma. And I am proud of him for being an accounting uh, major. As Carl mentioned and Michael is as well, I am also an accountant, so we were kindred spirits in that respect. But now let's talk about what happened after he graduated. And this was a very critical time in his lifeline. 1981, he meets us. These guys from Long Beach. All right, so you heard that uh, he resembled. So I, I would think these pictures are proof of that. So there's Roger. And then as we are college buddies who are just enjoying our life of a little bit of study and a lot of partying, uh, we did uh, have a lot of opportunities to get together. And just basically, oh, this thing moved too fast, sorry guys. But then we, we enjoyed just going out and hanging out, telling stories to each other, and we'll have many to share uh, after uh, the reception tonight. But definitely enjoy those times, even, even through the later years, more recently. Still getting together, enjoying food and fellowship and so forth. And this is actually one of the last group pictures of the college guys that we had where we went out to dinner. Roger and I are really close. <laughs> Let me go ahead and tell you guys a little bit more about the marriage that he has, where he brought uh, Marita and Weston and Mitch into his life. So here's some few photos for that. Oops. But actually, when we talk about love and marriage, it actually started with this college group where we have our friend Steve Ewan here. Roger had the honor of being the best man. Very dapper young guy there, huh? And then we always said that as the guys grew through these life cycles that the marriage was very exciting for us, but even more fun for us was these passion parties, which again stays wherever we were, so you'll never hear anything about that. It's a tight name group that shares those stories. But it was Roger's turn to get married in 1988. There's a picture of him as the groom. But there's the family. There's his bride and Rita, back in 1988. And I had the privilege to be his best man. Now, there's a story here that I'm showing you guys that says that when we had the wedding, the next thing that we enjoyed was the bachelor party, but there was one more thing that we started as a tradition. So it was what we call the making of the Asian temptations. <laughs> so what it would be would be we would gather at the reception and put on a dance and song, uh, most likely it was to the Temptations of My Girls. And so that was my wedding, where we all uh, performed and I made our first you know, entrance into the public. But then at Roger's wedding, we reconvened, and we actually uh, performed again for them. 
and we actually uh, uh, formed this nice little message that, that let everybody know that Roger loves Maria. And then we actually got together again when it was Bill's turn to get married. So the agency just got to perform and have many public uh, um, uh, shared. Okay, but then even one more. Uh, it was about back in 2012 when I actually celebrated my 25th anniversary. And Rogers uh, returned with the rest of the groomsmen to come out and help me celebrate. And we did have to reunite and do one more performance. <laughs> so we're looking a little older, but we still had all the groups. Okay, but now I want to switch the attention to the Lao, the, the new generation of Lao family. So here's some pictures now where we see Weston being born. And then Mitchie is born. And now the family can start to grow up. And this picture really tells me how much Roger loved his boys. I mean, he just, they were his world. <laughs> Taking them on vacations and showing them the world. And then they do their annual Christmas party. And I wanted you guys to note that, like, up on the poster board, you'll see the various uh, hard copies of these posted up, and that actually comes from Maria's collection. Um, but because I always value all the, the friendships that uh, I get to maintain all through my years, uh, I actually digitize these from my own collection. So these are, I have every single one that the Lao family sent to our family. So just thank you for keeping us included in your lives, guys. That's the most recent one. Here's some pictures of the, the family gathering together with the in-laws and so forth. Oh, and then Ro pictures of Roger as an uncle. And I want to make a special mention now about this picture. One of the things is, as we know, you know, Roger's surrounded here by his blood relatives, but in my view, Roger was my brother, just because we spent so much time together building a friendship beyond just being uh, cordial acquaintances. Uh, we raised our families together, so here's a picture that we take with the college brothers together with the kids growing up with us. So basically, our kids grew up with more cousins. give proper acknowledgement to all this work experience that Rogers has. So just look at these awesome companies that he was able to, to contribute his experience and his knowledge and helping them, you know, to be financially stable and so forth. So I'm just proud of what Roger was able to accomplish with his skills to, to again earn a good living and really do well in, in his career. So we applaud him for that. Let's get back to some fun stuff here. So here's some pictures for you guys to see how Roger enjoys vacationing. And like when we were going to school, we'd always uh, take a road trip and go up to Northern California. And there was a time that after I graduated, Roger and I had this great idea to go to Hawaii together. So we got to spend a little time, just a couple, just two of us and a few others that met us out there. Roger's looking pretty buff, right? <laughs> and then he does like to travel. So there were some pictures here of him around the world. There's New York. That's Vegas. So Roger's definitely a guy who enjoys, works hard, and knows how to play as well. And then, of course, we could do the big, as our families grew up, we could do family vacations. This is the shot of us up in Big Bear. And then there was this special cruise that happened in 2007. Um, this was uh, what I'll say was our last chance to do a family vacation. Um, and so there's a picture we went up to Alaska. And we just really enjoyed that time. So great meals and great excursions and just great memories. Roger loves his boys. And 
here's where uh, the more recent one where they're actually able to go. Sorry, guys. Parasailing. <laughs> Bungee jumping, I believe. And then even uh, now, uh, there's some recent travels where Roger was able to go to Southeast Asia, and here's some pictures from Thailand. scary there, but I guess that's what makes it exciting. Alright, so let me come back to uh, how we've celebrated over these years with Roger. So here's some photos here, back in the day when we first uh, went to Halloween parties and dressing up extra special. And just again, having fun and enjoying everybody's company. <laughs> And then it was the time when we started having babies and starting to raise our kids, getting distracted with that, but then able to come back together in the later stages of our lives and still be able to get together. And then most recently, I think Roger was able to go to the basketball game on the day after Christmas. So he got to go see the Clipper game. And then we have mentioned all the things that Roger enjoys playing. So I want to give you guys a few photos of that. So here's a, a, young, a young Roger with young Michael. Sorry. That was his backyard pool. He loves tennis. And he definitely loves golf. And then we always had this ongoing competition. Uh, the, the guys would get together and definitely it, gets, it would be the college buddies versus the Lau brothers. Um, it was fierce, and I think in the end, uh, we still hold the title as Beijing the Victor, so we always rub that in Roger's face. Okay, and then again, as we mentioned a couple of things that Roger does like, I just wanted to show that to you guys. Roger does enjoy his liquid uh, refreshments. So, here's what we just for enjoying as wine and beer concierge. <laughs> And I'm moving into a very important recent uh, update for you guys. I got this text from Roger, and this is the one that uh, really touched me because it let me know again that uh, in the recent year, um, he was very, very happy in the fact that he had found someone that he could really share some time with. And so here's a, 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 little, a few photos of our friend, Rina. And this was an event that happened back in November, just a couple months ago. Where this is an event where Roger and Rita came out. We got to meet her for the first time. Um, and this is a point where Roger was actually going through some of the things that, that he was suffering from. Um, so the, that was the point that some concerns were coming up. But this is at least the last uh, dinner picture that I have of him. So now I want to kind of just make sure everybody can really know what happened in these last months or so. So I want to share. So it was at 5.35 p.m. on Thursday, January 5th, that Roger was informed by his doctors that he had pancreatic cancer and that it had metastasized to his lungs. He called me within 10 minutes and he shared that news. And I won't share all the profanity that I shouted when he shared this. But after I hung up numb, understanding what was before us, I called him right back. But I think at that point he's probably calling all the brothers, letting them know what's going on. So um, what I did was I texted him and I just said, let's get together for lunch on Saturday. And this is how the text went. Morning, Sam. I'm good for lunch on Saturday. Let's test base later. And then he asked this question. Can you give me a cross that I can wear and keep in my pocket? Thanks. And I, of course, I responded, I have your cross and I will bring it tomorrow. See you at noon. That's a picture of us having that lunch Saturday. And just a comment there, you see Rita, she had just caught back from Taiwan. So she, he told her, I believe it would have probably been the night before. And to show how much she really cares for him, I mean, she was crying during that entire lunch, just being sad about what Roger was going through. 
But I gave him the cross at that lunch. And I wrapped it in this message here. So I just want to make sure I take a moment to honor again the meaning of the cross and why it was so important for Roger to have something that he could symbolize his faith. So in the story of the cross, you understand that in Isaiah, it was prophesied of the coming of our Lord. And so when he is given his birth, which is why we celebrate Christmas, um, we see him grow up, minister to the people around him, and teach the disciples. And then he was crucified, where he died on the cross for us, and for our sins. And then he had the resurrection and to be alive again for eternity. And that's why we celebrate our Easter. And so with that assurance, we now know that you know, Roger is in heaven as well. And with the knowledge that, again, that when Christ went to be in heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to dwell within us, to give us peace and comfort during times like this. And it's all because Jesus loves us. So Carl mentioned that Roger was baptized, and I wanted to share the video of his baptism. And that we're celebrating Palm Sunday together. And the kids were, were so helpful and just a few moments ago in, in reminding us really what this, this weekend, Palm Sunday weekend, is all about. It's all about worshiping and praising Jesus Christ as our King, certainly King of all creation. Uh, but also king of every aspect of our personal lives. Well, this morning we have a number of members of our, our church family that have made that decision to proclaim publicly that Jesus Christ is their king, and they're going to do that through baptism. And you're going to hear some great stories uh, of what a difference it makes uh, in a person's life when they come to know Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior. Our first person this morning I want to introduce you to is Roger Lau. Could we give him a, a Lake Avenue welcome this morning? <laughs> Roger, it's been, been great uh, just getting to know you a bit uh, in these past, uh, past weeks and to hear a bit about, about your story. Uh, could you share with us just some of the highlights of how you've come to know Christ? Sure. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's an honor to be in front of this congregation. Um, growing up, I wasn't exposed to a spiritual environment, and um, I always said to myself, I really want to someday um, understand my faith, my spirituality a little bit more. And last year, I picked up the Bible and started reading it for the very first time, and um, it just resonated with me, um, you know, the, the, the Bible, Christ, God, and... Um, I've been living in Pasadena for about five years, and a friend of mine told me to uh, try Lake Avenue Church. And um, with a little bit of uneasiness, I started coming to Lake Avenue on my own last summer. And um, as soon as I got here, everybody was so friendly. Uh, they made me feel very welcome, and um, it felt like home. So um, this is a great church. and. Uh, listening to sermons from um, Pastor Greg, it just made a lot of sense. So I knew this is something I wanted to do. Um, and then I, last year or recently, I did some uh, re-examination of my life and I realized that I've avoided um, several incidents, uh, accidents that would have been, could have really caused me harm and I'm thinking, I'm so fortunate. I mean, I really should have been hurt, but I wasn't. And I came to the realization that Jesus Christ was my savior and was protecting me against harm's way. And so I realized I want to be a Christian and follow and be a better person and follow the path, path of Christ. So here I am today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Roger. Amen. Could you just share with us briefly as to why it is that you want to be baptized this morning? Um, well, I want to profess my commitment to Jesus Christ, and I hope this will bring my relationship closer to my Lord. 
Roger, on the basis of your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, that he's your Lord and your Savior, I baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He's referring to a car accident back in September 1985 when he was on a road trip to San Francisco in a silver on the Prairie. And that's what that, that car looked like. Not wearing his seatbelt, and while driving through a tunnel, his car was clipped by another vehicle, and the Prairie went into a major spin out. There were a lot of other cars around, but not one collided with him. In hindsight, Roger realized he might have died that day. So he thanks the Lord for sparing his life so that he could actually experience marriage, raising two fine boys, enjoying a successful accounting career, and always getting beat by me in tennis. <laughs> So you did hear several scripture readings today, and I just want to re-emphasize one. The Bible teaches the night before Jesus was crucified, he told his disciples that he would be leaving them, and they would not go with him. Peter asked where he was going and why they couldn't go with him. And Jesus assured them that they would follow him eventually. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you myself, take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. I take great comfort in that verse 
I take great comfort in knowing that in the final moment when he passed, Jesus took him to be with him. And that's how we can celebrate his life now. And with that, I shared the picture from Hawaii, but I'm going to add this message. Roger, I will see you again in heaven where we will have our resurrected bodies, fit and free from pain, enjoying a paradise even more beautiful than the Hawaii of 1984. I love you, bro. And that concludes my sharing of his life, but I wanted to put the list of all the things that Roger is. And Carl asked for you guys to raise your hand earlier, so I just want to know, too, all the people who are here today, if you guys can show your active support, Roger, and tell me that during this 58 years that he was here on this earth, I know he was a son to his mom and dad, and I will see a mom a little bit later. Um, a show of hands, who was Roger's brother? Who was Roger's bro? Who was a fellow Trojan with Roger? Fight on. Who was Roger's wife? Who was the Roger the father of? Who was a Roger an uncle to? Who is Roger a cousin of? Oh, that's a lot of hands. Who worked with Roger? Thank you for coming out to support him. And just as a general catch-all, who is Roger's friend? Thank you. And I know a lot of you guys came from far away, probably fought through each other. Just thank you again for coming out here and supporting the family. And I think the most important question, if we're going to give honoring to Roger and what, where he's at now in eternity, and that one day we have the hope of seeing him again, can I see a, a raise of hand at least to show who believes in our Lord Jesus Christ as a Christian as well? Thank you. So again, Roger Lowry, a fun-loving, kind, and decent man. Don't you agree? I believe... Carl, is there anything else? Otherwise, I can lead into the benediction. Since there were three scripture readings, I wanted to at least share three blessings for you guys. So I picked these three verses out of the Bible. The first one comes from Numbers 6, 24, 26. And it says, I pray that the Lord will bless and protect you, and that he will show you mercy and kindness. May the Lord be good to you and give you peace. The second benediction I'd like to share with this group comes from 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The amazing grace of the Master Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And the third and final benediction is from Jude 24, 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory in great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.